Hey folks, Nitro here once again to talk about another game that I think we all need to talk about. At least, if you're a fan of ARPGs like Diablo, Path of Exile, Last Epoch, and who could forget Titan's Quest, which we'll talk about in a sec. The game I want to talk about is Crate Entertainment's Grim Dawn. A game I had heard about but never thought to try. That is, until one of my oldest friends and I were halfway through a game of Star Wars Rebellion, only to have the save file implode and lose precious hours of him slowly dismantling my empire. I'm not bitter. After a few months of chipping away at Titan's Quest and losing his character file, he recommended we try Grim Dawn instead. Developed on the Titan Quest engine by many of the staff from Iron Lore who worked on Titan Quest, he sold it to me as a Victorian dark fantasy with some similar mechanics, so I picked it up on sale and figured I'd give it a try. Gonna take two seconds to say the thing. You know the thing, the thing we always say. But Drew, Daedred, and I appreciate you checking this video out and hope you stick around. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos as we've got a bit of variety. Different strokes for different folks. Okay, that sounded a little odd. You know, let's just get back to the video. So hopping fresh into it, I gotta say the game felt great. Just familiar enough in terms of the staples of ARPGs, and a stick or a pointy thing to hit the first few enemies, and enough armor to keep you alive until something drops with a jacket that gives you plus one extra armor, and I don't know, a 1% boost to style. You go around, you pick up your first quests, and head out taking out progressively harder enemies than for the travel from the typical hub town. Now, I grew up on Diablo, and I mean the brutally annoying how did I ever fucking play this as a kid OG Diablo. It was relatively simple. You choose your class, you loot, you scoot, and usually you stay in your lane to the end. The warrior goes smashy smashy, the rogue goes shooty shooty, and the mage goes pew pew pew. Modern ARPGs have kind of thrown that monotony out the window. In this example, you pick your first class at level 2 between the Soldier, Demolitionist, Occultist, Arcanist, Nightblade, and Shaman, although the DLC adds more classes. Each class slash mastery comes with its own set of skills, both passive and active, many of which offer unlockable evolutions that take the ability to new levels. There's already a few options of how you want to play, which is nothing new I know, but where things get really interesting and reminiscent of Titan's Quest is when you unlock multi-classing which in this game is level 10. This changes and completely opens up your options going forward. The character who I'm using in most of my footage is a battle mage, heavily leaning towards the mage part of that. While I can do some decent melee damage, much of it comes from my elemental buffs via armor and skills, and the bulk of my damage comes from some maxed out AOE spells that nuke most mobs and chip pretty well on bosses. My point is that the character customization is expansive and can be enough of a time sink on its own. And the multi-classing is just so much fun to play around with, I, I can't put it down. I really enjoy it. That also brings us to the devotions. Dozens of constellations filled with perks, both passive and active, to take the power and strength of your character to an entirely different level. And once again, offering an obscene amount of customization for your playstyle. Like, my current playstyle, which is just blast everything with an obscene amount of fire, ice, blood, aether, burn, poison, and emotional damage every three seconds, and if it doesn't die, freeze it till the cooldown is up and blast them again. The world and the lore is very rich given how many games and IPs have humanity on the brink of destruction. It still manages to feel fresh and vibrant in its own storytelling, there's something like 50 to 60 hours of gameplay in there if you're looking to seek out all the quests and see the story through. The grim kind of Victorian era stylization adds to the atmosphere and the gameplay as well as your arsenal ranges from like axes and swords to blunderbusses and flintlock pistols, literal human limbs and magic tomes, you name it. Plus, some of the armor goes hard. The devs seem to actually give a damn about evolving the game as a long with DLCs, they are still delivering regular updates, adding new features, optimizing UI, just generally maintaining a great game. We love this. 
As I mentioned, it was a friend who got me into it, and while I've played a fair amount solo and enjoyed it, it's definitely a great experience fighting alongside a buddy, especially getting to figure out devastating combos you can put together that will just cleave through tough crowds or melt brutal bosses. Loot is plentiful, as it should be, and will have you sorting inventories in no time. And of course, there is a pretty robust crafting system that when in combination with blueprints can help you put together some disgusting builds. So, wanted to keep this one brief, so we'll wrap that up there, but once again, if you like this video, make sure to hit a like or subscribe for more rambling. I might end up doing a similar brief video on Titan's Quest, and definitely on Titan's Quest 2 when it comes out, because goddamn, I loved the first one so much. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. Peace.